I first conceptualized Molly, I wanted her to be a really strong woman. And I thought of her as the, like a sculptor like Marisol who worked with wood. And I envisioned her with these big blocks of wood and with big hammers and really going at it and really powerful. Somehow the image of her there bang, bang with a, with a hammer and chisel, it felt like I had somehow a cliche and, and I don't know whether you would quite believe it. I think the pottery thing was still that she could be tough, but that the shapes that she could make would be sensuous. Pottery just kind of did all of that. I was sitting in a scoring session for The Naked Gun, and one of the sound editors had a magazine that she was reading, and it was a pottery magazine. And I said, what is this? And then I think, wait a minute, this could be sensual. Jimmy took pottery lessons. I remember the two of us went down and she picked it up much quicker than I did. I, I couldn't do it, but it was important to her to be credible on screen. I just didn't want my pot to wobble. It was like a sure fire sign that I was no good and I was faking it. We had potters who had trained her who were on set when we were shooting and they actually did start some of the pots and then Demi would come in and work with them. Jerry prepared very well the scene. You see, Jerry is director who thinks ahead of time. He prepares very well mechanically. There's a lot of footage of things flopping and spattering. You get that machine going too fast, and, and uh, it's, you know, the whole crew would be, uh, would be covered with pottery. We were pretty greased up at that, that, that mud and clay for, for quite a while. This is like, you know, movie secrets. It was like how to have that slip, that wetness, so it was sensual, but not that it spattered all over their faces. It was a great education and a great exploration of creativity that's very physically inclined. And it's very, very sensual. I mean, even when you're working alone, <laughs> I mean, just kidding your hands in the clay. Playing in that mud stuff and all over your arms, that, that was pretty sexy. Definitely got my juices going. I thought it was really brilliant that it's used within the sensuousness of our love scene. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope it wasn't a masterpiece. Well, not now. Nobody expected it to fall. Demi recovered so quickly about, oh, well, she wasn't angry, she wasn't disappointed. In a way, the whole nature of their relationship was shown in that moment. I just let the clay slide between your fingers. What I like about this scene is simplicity. Simplicity. If you remember, it's a kind of too short, and he's sitting behind her. And the most simple light. There was an unbelievable eroticism to the two of them shaping this very phallic kind of bowl. And then there's the music. There's that incredible song. Lisa Weinstein, one of the producers, just brought in this tape and said, you know, I think I found the perfect song. The longing of that music the pain of the music is wonderful. Once we picked Unchained Melody, and it had such relevance to the story, especially relevance that grew over the time of the story, when Oda May gives her body to Sam and allows them to touch again, that touch is filled with that song. It did have a great deal of revival as a result of Ghost, because it was an old song. It came back and has taken on a whole new kind of place in the, in the literature of music. Everyone also left the set during that, because it was one of those moments they only had very basic crew around, and Jerry wanted a very quiet. People who've looked at the movie closely have said, there's something very odd here. They don't have mud on their hands while they're dancing. Why don't they have mud on their hands? Originally, this love scene with the clay pottery wheel and the dancing and everything was more than one scene, but they just kept the camera rolling and we just kept going and it was one of those times in both of our careers that I think, you know, something happened, just something came alive. We had planned to do this incredible love-making scene. Where Molly has this big cover that she has over one of her statues. It's like a parachute cover and we thought they would cover themselves with that and make love under this parachute. The electricity of the two of them dancing at that moment following the pottery scene was so electric 
that Jerry said, we don't need the lovemaking, this is the lovemaking. It's not about jumping somebody's bones that makes a love scene in a movie. It's about the connection between two people in their eyes and that that's what's sexy. You don't see that much love in people making love. You see it in them being together. Same thing when you're dancing. If you get that connection, the magic happens. The electricity and fire happens. And it doesn't matter whether you like the person you're working with. It can be discussed. As long as the camera reads passion. I mean, we had no idea that it was good.